Hi, I am Dr. Goodmanson. This video contains supplemental material intended for my students in my aircraft design classes at Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University, where I currently teach. The video features excerpts from my textbook, General Aviation Aircraft Design, Applied Methods and Procedures, now also available in a Chinese translation. The book is available online from a large number of outlets, including Elsevier and Amazon. It is recommended for anyone interested in the design of general aviation aircraft. Greetings fellow aircraft designers. In this video I continue my design of a small LSA using the aircraft design code surfaces. If you have not seen part 1 or 2 of this video series I strongly suggest you view those first to better understand what we're up against as well as how we got to here. We left off in part 2 where I showed how to run the VLM solver, created groups to organize the geometric entities and ended up with having surfaces determine the stick fixed neutral point. We observed that the central gravity of the model was in the incorrect position and this will be fixed now. You may remember that I set up the model in part 2 such that the program will do all the inertia work. Well, most of it. However, I haven't even set up that part yet. Let's fix this now. Let's assume that I have calculated the weight of the wing as 200 pounds, horizontal tail as 25 pounds, and the vertical tail as 15 pounds. This amounts to 240 pounds. Assume this is obtained using the detailed weight estimation methods in Chapter 6 of my book. Since I intend to take advantage of the 1320 pound LSA gross weight limit, this leaves 1080 pounds unaccounted for. We will deal with that shortly. Nevertheless, I am going to apply these weights to the lifting surfaces that I have already created. To do this, I start by selecting both wing halves. Then I select the Tools menu, followed by the Distribute Weight on Selected Surfaces and Notes command. This opens this form where I enter 200 pounds and press the OK button. I repeat this for the horizontal and vertical tails. Note how these values appear in the groups list. This helps me keep track of the weight of each group. Also note how the center gravity point has moved to a different location. Clearly this is an unacceptable location. As a rule of thumb for conventional aircraft, the center gravity should be near the quarter court of the mean geometric chord. Of course there is a range of acceptable placement for the CG. There will be an aft limit and a forward limit. How exactly this is determined is also presented in chapter 6 of my book. Right now, the position of the stick fixed neutral point stipulates the maximum aft position. In interest of safety, we subtract 8% of the mean geometric chord from that value. This is based on the estimation that the so-called stick free neutral point will fall within 5% of the stick fixed value, and 3% are allotted to possible error in the model estimation. Thus, we have a revised aft limit that equals the current stick fixed neutral point, minus 8% mean geometric chord. At any rate, we know nothing yet about the forward limit. But it remains to bring the central gravity in front of the stick fixed neutral point. Let's do this now. I drop a point near the leading edge of the wing, and then I convert it to a node. A node can be thought of as an advanced point. It can act as a simple weight, a thrust device, a landing gear tire, a propeller, in addition to weight, it can be associated with moments and products of inertia, as well as force and moment formulation. Let me call this node ballast for now. I enter a remark that this is just a temporary point, which accounts for weight other than the wing, horizontal and vertical tails. I'll split this up into multiple nodes later. I enter 1080 pounds and press the OK button. I see how far forward this node brings the center of gravity. This is of course due to its weight being substantially higher than the previous geometry. After all, the point includes the weight of the rest of the airframe, engine, fuel, landing gear and occupants. Surfaces has a tool to help me position the node such the center of gravity will be in a specific location. Select Tools and then specify a CG location. Select the XCG in terms of percentage MAC or MGC and type 25%. 
Press Adjust and Acknowledge. Close the form. You can see that the ballast node has been moved to a position that brings the central gravity to the quarter chord of the mean geometric chord. Now let's determine the maximum lift coefficient of this configuration. Like I stated in part 1, this can be done using the DATCOM method in section 9.5.11 in my book. I consider this a great conceptual design method and it will give you CL max plus or minus 5 to 6 percent accuracy. First, we're going to take advantage of another surfaces feature, reference values. Select the right wing by double clicking on it to open the edit surface form. Select the reference tab and enter the maximum lift coefficients for the NACA 4415 and 4412 airfoils which we obtained from the theory of wing sections. Here we must recall that the A1 curve for the right wing is the NACA 4415 airfoil and it achieves a seal max of 1.4. The A2 curve is the NACA 4412 airfoil and it achieves a maximum lift coefficient of 1.5. It is a good design practice to have an airfoil with a higher CL max at the tip to help promote roll stability near stall. Press OK and repeat for the left wing, noting that the A1 curve is the tip airfoil for that wing surface and A2 is the root. Press OK to close. With this done, let's run the code at an angle of attack of 12 degrees. Press OK to close, and then the Solve button. Once Surfaces is done, let's select both wing halves here by holding down Shift while selecting them from the Groups list. Next, let's take a look at the section lift coefficients in the YC plane. You can see the highest value of 1.20 appears near the middle of the wing. This means that the tapered wing will actually begin to stall in that location. This is something I've witnessed with my own two eyes in real flight testing. Anyway, we want a value closer to the yellow line, which represents the maximum lift coefficient for the airfoils. Let's rerun the model at a higher angle of attack, say 14 degrees. Press OK, and then Solve. We can see we are still below the yellow line. We want the section lift coefficients to contact the yellow line. This is where the wing will be stalled enough for the stall to break and the airplane to drop on its nose. Let's repeat for 16 degrees. Press OK and then solve. Now the section lift coefficients are just a tad too large. Let's reduce the angle of attack to 15.5 degrees. Again, press OK and then Solve. This time, the section lift coefficients are spot on. Let's go to the three-dimensional view to make it easier to figure out what the current three-dimensional lift coefficient is for this vehicle. Its current value is the maximum lift coefficient. To do this, select the Forces slash Moments tab on the VLM console, press the Stability Coordinate System button, and place a check mark next to the aerodynamic force coefficients. Recall that the stability coordinate system is aligned to the oncoming airflow and has its positive z-axis pointed downward. Thus we see that the value of CSZ is just about negative 1.375. Let's round it down to negative 1.38. This means the maximum lift coefficient is predicted to be about 1.38. Let's think about the implication of this value. CL max equals 1.38. Let's use it and calculate the stalling speed of the aircraft. When we do this, we find that it amounts to 59.5 kcas. This is the first warning flag that we have discovered using this approach. There are no ifs or buts about it. We have flunked the first test of certification. We bust the required maximum stalling speed for LSA of 45 kcas by a whopping 14.5 kcas. Surfaces is telling us that our wing is way too small. Yes, I may want to look for airfoils that have a higher maximum lift coefficient than the NACA airfoils, but that solution is wrought with its own issues. Unless those airfoils too actually have a reliable wind tunnel test data to support their maximum lift coefficient, I have to worry about whether they will actually produce the advertised CL max. Right now, it seems a safer bet to increase the wing area. I want to inspect the capabilities of this puny little horizontal tail. 
Can it trim the aircraft for straight and level flight at 120 kcas and for stall at 45 kcas with the central gravity at 25% mean geometric chord? Let's see. First, let's set a far field airspeed of 120 kcas. It is a good practice to confirm whether the control surface functionality works correctly before trimming the aircraft. Select the controllers tab on the VLM console. Enter 15 degrees for pitch control and press the set button. Elevator seems to work correctly. Enter 15 degrees for your control and press set. Rudder seems to work well too, even though we're not going to use it for now. Press reset when done. Then let's select tasks and trimmed level flight to open the trim wizard. Press next. Inspect that our desired airspeed of 120 knots is entered. Checked. Press next. Check to see the total weight of 1320 pounds and that the trim about y-axis is selected. Checked. Press next. Check to see we have 30 iterations entered. This means that if a solution is not achieved in 30 iterations, there probably is something wrong with our model. We may as well stop and fix. Lift tolerance indicates how close to the actual weight we want to get. It is sufficiently accurate to select within 1% of the weight. Here the weight is 1320 pounds, so 13 is close enough. The same rule applies to the moment tolerance, 13 foot-pounds. Press next. I use this option for rare occasions. Here uncheck the checkbox. Press next. Press the trim button. Surfaces goes to work. It will stop when the lift is within 1% of the weight and the moment is zero plus or minus the tolerance value we entered. Alrighty then, surfaces has completed. Let's take a look at the results. Select the progress table which displays the solution from each iteration. Here it took 13 iterations to get to a trimmed condition. Look at the lift. It is 1321 pounds and pitching moment is about 8 foot pounds. Both pretty darn close to the target values. The final angle of attack is 1.3 degrees and the elevator to trim is minus 5.5 degrees. This is the second warning surfaces is flagging for us. With the central gravity at 25% MGC, at maximum airspeed of 120 kcas, this configuration will require 5.5 degrees of trailing edge up elevator. For a properly sized tail, this should be a slightly trailing edge down. I suspect the horizontal tail is indeed too small. Let's check again. This time let's see if we can trim the aircraft at the LSA stall limit of 45 kcas. Change the airspeed to 45 kcas. Select the trim wizard again. And trim. I want to speed up this segment but there's an important lesson here. This trim action is showing a telltale sign of an untrimmable aircraft. You see how the moment bounces up and down, up and down. This is going nowhere. Let's stop this. This is the third flag surfaces raises for us. This horizontal tail does not have authority enough to trim the airplane at 45 kcas. Since this airplane stalls at 59.5 kcas rather than 45 kcas in the first place, it is optimistic to expect this to happen anyway. If we look at the progress table, we can see that the code was trying to trim with an elevator deflection around 45 degrees the trailing edge up. This is the maximum surfaces allows. A real airplane may only have a maximum trailing edge up angle of 25 degrees. To compound the conundrum, our CG position is just 25% mean geometric chord. If it were a 10% mean geometric chord, this would be even worse. We have come to a dead end. We have two important changes to make to this configuration. We must increase the wing area and we must increase the horizontal tail volume. In part 4 I will make these changes to the model and try again. I hope this video has helped your understanding of what we're trying to accomplish in aircraft design. They say an engineer is someone who measures twice and cuts once. 
Here, we clearly have to measure a few more times before we cut anything. As always, please consider giving the video a thumbs up rating on YouTube. This is very important to us video developers. Of course, you should subscribe to my channel as well. Thank you for watching.